Hello and welcome to An Academy. Welcome to another episode in our series of Geographer, where we bring for you important current affairs, topics and articles which are relevant for your exam perspective from the subject of geography as well as environment ecology. Today, we are going to talk about Cyclone Dana. Now, this is a cyclone, a development of a low pressure depression which has happened over the region of Bay of Bengal and has remained in news quite significantly. Now, in this particular session, we shall be talking about the developments, the weather patterns, the wind patterns and the tracking of the cyclone with the help of satellite data and the satellite image as well. At the end of this video, we shall also be handling and tackling a multiple choice question so that you get an idea about what kind of questions can be framed from the topic when it comes to the requirement of the prelims exam. If you like the video, please don't forget to click on the like, share and the subscribe button. So without further ado, let us jump straight ahead into the topic and let us understand what is this cyclone Dana. So basically, as you can see, it has remained in news quite significantly for the past few couple of days where the low pressure has been developing over the region of Bay of Bengal. And this low pressure system which started developing in the southeastern portion of Bay of Bengal has started moving towards Odisha and West Bengal. As a consequence, the weather patterns over the eastern and the southern coastline have been disturbed and the entire eastern and southern part of India have been dotted with very heavy rains. Railways has cancelled many of the trains and there has been disruption to the normal public life and order. So first of all, when we talk about this tropical cyclone that is Cyclone Dana, we will come also talk about the naming of the cyclone where the name has been derived from. But basically before that, this tropical cyclone presently as we speak today, this cyclone is present over the region of almost central Bay of Bengal. And with this particular image, you can see that in the central portion, there is a significant amount of heat also which is present. Now, for those of you who do not know about the entire details of the formation of a tropical cyclone, we have covered that in another video and the basics of tropical cyclone along with the naming has been covered in the video and the link for that video is provided in the description below. So, you can take a look about the entire formation, the conditions required for cyclonic formation and the movement of tropical cyclones along with the cyclonic season in India. The video link is provided in the description below. Having said that, now this cyclone has developed over the region of Bay of Bengal and as is the case with the tropical cyclone, it can develop only over water bodies because the water bodies end up providing it enough amount of moisture and that moisture is something which undergoes condensation as the air rises up and that releases a significant amount of latent heat of condensation. This latent heat of condensation which is released every time moist air undergoes condensation and leads to cloud formation. That is a driving force behind the cyclonic development. And that is why the tropical cyclones, the more time that they spend over the water bodies, the stronger they get. Now, this is the place of origin where that low pressure system started forming. And then it started traveling from east to west. And that is the case with most of the tropical cyclones. They travel in a direction from east to west. And the reason for that is very simple. You see, this entire cloud formation and cyclonic development, they also get influenced by the surface winds. And in this particular area that is within the tropics, we have the availability of trade winds. Now, trade winds, what is their general direction of movement? The general direction of the trade winds is from east to west. And that is why the tropical cyclones also tend to move from east to west. Now, this low pressure center is attracting winds from all directions, as you can see. And the winds are moving in a kind of a cyclical manner. And this movement of the winds happens to occur due to the Coriolis force. So basically, 
to declutter it, so let's suppose you have a low pressure center. Now around the low pressure center, it will attract winds from all different directions. Now owing to the fact that we are in northern hemisphere, the winds will divert to its right owing to the Coriolis force. They will all deviate to the right. And that is where the winds will end up gaining a kind of an overall anti-clockwise circulation. So that is something that you observe in this cyclonic movement as well. It is an anti-clockwise rotation of winds. Okay. So this will change into clockwise if there is a tropical cyclone formed in the southern hemisphere of winds. Now, as per Indian Meteorological Department, if you track the movement of the cyclone, this is the expected path of the cyclone. When the cyclone basically developed, its intensity was not very significant. It was a kind of a low pressure, but then the wind movement was somewhere around 20 to 30 km per hour. As you can see, the cyclone would intensify and the predicted path of movement carries it straight into Odisha and West Bengal. Now, when that cyclone makes contact with the land, the land experiences very strong winds along with heavy rainfall and significant amount of thunder and lightning. That is an event which we refer to as the landfall. Now, once the cyclone makes a landfall, that is when its supply of moisture gets cut off. The moisture supply gets cut off. Now, as the moisture supply gets cut off, that means what? There won't be any more condensation which will happen. There won't be any more latent heat which will be released and the cyclone won't get any stronger. That is why I will repeat the sentence. The longer the cyclone stays over the water body, the stronger it gets and more intense does it get. When it gets in contact with the land, no moisture, no latent heat, no strengthening. In fact, all the moisture which was already present will rain off and it will die. But that is not the case every time. There have been certain instances, for example, Cyclone Titli. For example, you had even Cyclone Tote. Now, these cyclones, when they hit the land, the land already had received enough amount of rainfall prior to that, so there was moisture availability. So in very rare cases, sometimes when the land has got enough moisture due to significant rainfall prior to landfall, that is when the cyclone can intensify further. But those are rare cases. Cyclone Dana is not one of them. Cyclone Dana is expected to make landfall and is expected to weaken thereafter. So this entire region will be impacted. Now, if you take a look at the wind pattern, which is present again as of today, if you take a look at the wind pattern as per the satellite map, this is where the cyclone is present. And this is where the cyclone is headed. So overall, as you can see, the winds are being attracted from all different directions. Now think about it, a wind from the region of Bay of Bengal moves like this, covers the area around West Bengal, Jharkhand, Odisha and then into Andhra Pradesh, the entire region would receive heavy rainfall. But along with that, you also have these moist winds coming through these areas. And that is what is bringing heavy rains in the region of Coromandel coastline as well. This is aided with the fact that this is the time when the monsoon is withdrawing from the country. So the entire low pressure cell, which has brought significant amount of rainfall in the months of June, July, August and September, that is withdrawing. It is present over the part of the southern India right now. So that is again something which is bringing copious rains to southern part of India. But overall, it is the entire region of eastern coastline as well as the southern part of the peninsula which is experiencing heavy rains and that is going to continue for the next few days as well.
Now, the weather pattern which is associated with this is something of strong winds. But when we talk about the development of cyclone, how can we observe the development? Take a look at it with the help of satellite imagery. So this is the position of the cyclone that is on 22nd of October. Observe the cyclone in a very young phase over the region of the Bay of Bengal, the eastern and the southeastern part of Bay of Bengal. That is where the temperature of the water body exceeded around 29 degrees Celsius. Now, in water bodies of the tropics, if the temperature exceeds 27 degrees Celsius, that can be a condition to create significant low pressure. Here, the temperature is around 29 to 30 degrees Celsius. So, significant amount of low pressure started developing. As it was above the water body and a large water body, this further intensified. And observe the intensification. So, this is on 23rd, that is today. Right? Observe how it has gotten stronger and much more stronger as compared to 22nd. Then furthermore, on 24th, it is expected to reach the land areas. And that is when the heaviest impact of the cyclone will be felt. On 25th as well, so this is the prediction on 24th. And on 25th, you will observe that as it hits the land, its supply to moisture gets cut off and the cyclone is no longer that very strong. So observe there is a discontinuity in terms of the wind movement, the moisture carrying capability of the wind, because now it is only the land area which will receive rainfall and that too a small region for that matter. This is when on 25th of October, the cyclone is expected to disappear and basically before that significant amount of impact can be expected. So heavy rains across the eastern and southern coastline, strong winds up to 120 km per hour and coastal flooding in Odisha and West Bengal due to storm surge. When we say a storm surge, basically strong winds driving the waves further inland and up to a greater height which leads to coastal flooding in these areas. Now the naming has been done by Qatar and the name is Dana. So basically, if you take a look, this is the list from which the names of the cyclones are picked up when it comes to Northern Indian Ocean. So how is it done? So basically, you have certain organizations which are involved there. One is the Tropical Cyclone Warning Center, TCWC. Now, this Tropical Cyclone Warning Center observes the sea surface temperature and the pressure conditions across the tropical waters. And then, once it observes that a significant low pressure is getting developed, it warns the Regional Specialized Meteorological Centers or RSMC. Regional Specialized Meteorological Centers. Across the globe, there are six different Regional Specialized Meteorological Centers. You have the RSMC situated in New Delhi, which is basically accountable for any of the cyclone tracking and development which happens in the Northern Indian Ocean, be it Arabian Sea or be it Bay of Bengal. In case of the Southern Indian Ocean, you have the RSMC situated at the Reunion Islands, that is RSMC La Reunion. It is under the overall control by the French Meteorological Agency. Then similarly, you have RSMC Tokyo taking care of the cyclonic development and the typhoon development, so to say, in the region of South China Sea and Western Pacific. RSMC Honolulu taking care of the naming of the cyclones and hurricanes in the region of Eastern Pacific, RSMC Nadi for Southern Pacific and RSMC Miami for any hurricane development in the region of the Atlantic Ocean. So once the RSMC receives a warning from the Tropical Cyclone Warning Center, it starts tracking that depression. 
once that low pressure intensifies, it picks a name from this list. Now, how is that list arrived at? So basically, various different countries surrounding the Northern Indian Ocean. In this case, you basically have 13 countries. Now, 13 countries under the aegis of World Meteorological Organization and UNSCAP. Now, these 13 countries, they came together and each of them submitted 13 names. So, the countries are arranged in alphabetical order. So, starting with Bangladesh, India, Iran, Maldives, Myanmar, Oman, Pakistan, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, like that. And the name given by each one of them is arranged in the row in front. For example, the names given by India, Gati, Tej, Murasu, Ag, Vyom, Jhar, like that. Now, one by one, a name is picked off. For example, the last cyclone which occurred in the region was basically named Asna. This is the cyclone which has been named Dana. Now, the next cyclone which will occur, be it in Arabian Sea, be it in Bay of Bengal, it will be named as Fengal. The cyclone thereafter will be named as Cyclone Sakti. After that, Montha. So, like that, the cyclones are named. Once you have Ditwa, after that, the next cyclone will be named as Arnab. Then after that, Murasu. So, like that, you have the naming which is done. So, that is why the name Dana is something which has been provided by Qatar. So, this is a cyclone which will impact Odisha and West Bengal and is already impacting that particular area. So, overall in this video, what have we seen? What is that tropical cyclone Dana? Why it has developed owing to the low pressure in the region of Bay of Bengal? What is the direction of movement? East to west and it has got a heated power center. Why? Because of the latent heat of condensation which is provided due to the condensation of the moist air. The moist air which is dragged over the Bay of Bengal. The process of heating also, the process of condensation, what is that landfall, the expected movement and the regions impacted and the weather pattern. Now also we have taken a look at how the naming of the cyclone is done. Now let us take a look at a practice question which can be framed from the topic. Discuss the following statements or basically Analyze the various different statements given about tropical cyclones. The cyclonic systems move west to east in the northern hemisphere. Here we can refer to the following statements about tropical cyclones. The cyclonic systems move west to east in the northern hemisphere. The cyclone always weakens when it hits the coastline. The cyclones are able to generate heat as they intensify. Now here, how many of the above statements is rare incorrect? Take a look at the question again and find the correct answer. The correct answer, put that in the comment section below. So that will be all for this particular video. The detailed link again for the description of the development of a tropical cyclone, the basic formation of the tropical cyclone, the gaining of energy and the naming, the link is provided in the description. I hope that this video has added information to your existing knowledge set. Till we meet again, take care. Goodbye. Thank you.